Welcome back. This is a tutorial on how to get into Tinkercad code blocks and how to use it a little bit, how to have some fun with designing things with code. Let's start it off by uh, going to Tinkercad and uh, figuring out how do we log in to uh, be able to use code blocks. Let's check it out. So here we are. If you just get to Tinkercad for the first time, it's going to look something like this. You're going to be at the intro screen here. You want to click on sign in or join now if you haven't uh, created an account yet. Once you create an account, my suggestion is that you create an account using your student ID number. But you want to sign in and sign in with that account that you use. Um, it should be just your student ID number at monet.k12.ca.us and that should get you in. And uh, you can create a password and be able to create an account from there. Over here on the left hand side, once you get into your project screen or your design screen, you can see code blocks over here on the left. Click on that and then click on create new code blocks. Now there's a bunch of great code block ideas. Uh, if you see here, there's a bunch of starter ideas that'll give you some ideas about some of the things that you could potentially create. We're gonna see how we can play around with uh, some of the very basics of code blocks. That way you're armed with the ability to be able to create something. So we'll click on new design here. And I'm gonna start this with just one called code block basics. Now you're going to see up here on the top left, uh, this is where you can name your project. So when you name it, when you export your model, it's going to be called whatever this is. So make sure that you name it with your name in there. If you're going to turn it in for credit, make sure you put your name in there. That way it's not just some random name that comes up. Okay, after you've named it, you're going to see over here on the right hand side, this is where the work plane is that will show all the projects or all the things that you make. In here in the middle, this is the code that you have written so far. And then over here on the far left, this is all of the blocks that you could potentially use to code your, your project, to code whatever it is that you want to make. So let's cover some of the basic things that you can do with this. Uh, if you left click in this area and drag up and down and look around, you'll be able to look around. Also up here you can choose what view you'd like to look at the uh, project from. So you can click on this little thing up here to be able to look around your object. Uh, let me just put a box in here just for the sake of showing you. Uh, once you have some code in here, I just clicked and dragged a box in here. Uh, you can click up here on the play button and that will actually place the object. Now, it's going to place the object directly in the middle of these axes. The red axis is X, the green axis is Y, and the Z axis is the blue one here. Uh, basically, red, green, blue, the, the order of the rainbow, Roy, G, Biv, red, green, blue, and it's X, Y, and Z. So it's an easy way to remember all the axes here. What we can do is we can press play here, and it's going to start from the top of your code, and add code all the way down to the bottom here. So you can see that I just added a cube in here. Uh, you can change the color of the cube by clicking on the little dot here in the middle. Then you can change the color to whatever you'd like. When you press play again, it will show the changes and it's gonna go through what you've just uh, changed. Uh, other things that you can see, sometimes objects have parameters. So right here we can see this little arrow. Uh, this little arrow will let you choose different parameters. So if I wanted this width to be longer, let's say 50, I can then press play and you can see the width is now 50. I can make the, the length uh, 10, and if I press play here, we can see the changes that have been made. You can see if there's a height change that I could potentially put, I could put 50 in here, and that'll make it taller. So this is how you can edit the object sizes that are here. Now, not all objects are able to be sized this way, but just so you know, that's, that's how we can do that. Let's say I wanted to cut a hole out of an object. The way I can do that is, let's say I wanted to put uh, a round roof in here. If I wanted to cut a hole out, you're going to see right here next to the color, there's something that is like a little transparent line. That means it's a hole. So I can just add these objects together. You can see now that if I press play, it creates that round roof as a hole here in the middle of my object. I can then cut this hole out if I want to by going down to the purple modify areas and going to create group. Now when you use create group, it's going to find all the objects that are connected above this area and cut the uh, cut the holes out of the solid object. So you can see here that I have that object cut out. Now what if I had another object in here? Let me just grab another object. We'll grab like a heart for example. And uh, I'll add that in there. And we can see that the heart was added, but the, uh, let me just make it a little bit easier to see here. Let me take the heart out of there. Basically the holes will count for multiple objects. So if I have, let's, let's grab another box just for example. If I put another box in here, and I make this one, uh, well, let's just see what it'll do from here. Yeah, there we go. So you can see that the 
20 by 20 by 20 box here that's red also got cut out so you can kind of layer objects and change them around a bit and then you can cut holes through all of the objects which is really useful for being able to do any kind of coding. All right, now let's see if I wanted to scale this out a little bit and change it. How could I do that? So we have uh, multiple solid objects. We have um, holes that we can cut out of objects. Remember, you have to use create group to actually cut the hole out once you've put it in there. Now let's say I wanted to scale this up and make it bigger or smaller. Under the modify sections over here, there's a whole bunch of different shapes that you could potentially put in there. But let's go to the modify sections and check this out. So under modify, there's all kinds of different things that we could potentially use. Let's check out move first. So if we grab move, you can see here that I can click on this and I can move it in any direction I want. Uh, red would be X. Once again, green is Y and blue is Z. So if I wanted to move this up, I could put like 20 in Z. And when I press play, you'll see that it creates all the shapes and then it's gonna move this up 20 millimeters. All right, excellent. Now let's try uh, moving it in the negative direction. So if you move it in the negative direction, that moves it down or in the opposite direction of the axis. So we can see this is gonna move it down. Let's see you can move objects. Now, if, something to keep in mind with the modifiers is that uh, the modifiers, this purple move will work on whatever shape it's attached to. So if I wanted to move the hole down, for example, before I group it, I could attach the move modifier to the uh, to this half circle here. And when I press play, you're going to see that before it cuts the hole, it's going to move it in the Z direction 20. Or if I wanted to go negative 10 in the Z direction, then it's going to move it down before it, it cuts that hole out. So there's some options as to what you can do with each shape. Let's say I wanted to also have a move command on this red box here. I could grab that and move this up 10. And now when we press play, you're gonna see that the red box moves up and then the half circle here moves down. So this is how you can take objects and move them independently. You wanna use these modifiers. Now let's say I wanted to, uh, for example, grab this green box here and I wanted to scale it. So I moved it up but I want to also scale it. So I'm going to grab the scale tool here, or this, the scale purple box here, and I'm going to attach this. You can see here that this is like an object by itself. If I separate these, we can see it more clearly. If I have this separated here, if I press play, you're going to see that the hole comes in and it still does everything properly. So you can detach them. Um, it runs from the top code down. So if I put this code above and I press play, you're going to see that it does that first. So it's all in order from the top down, all the, how these blocks come together. All right, now let's check out scale. How does scale work? Well, you have one, you have ones right here for your X, Y, and Z. And these are basically, it's gonna multiply your scale by whatever you put here. So if I put two in the X direction, it means it's gonna make it twice as long in the X direction. Let's put two here. And now if I press play, ah, look at that, it's gonna stretch it and make it twice as long in the X direction. You can also use decimals. So if I put 0.5, for example, that would make it half as big in the X direction. So if I press play, you can see it cuts it in half. Uh, I can also do smaller than that. I can put 0.1 and press play, and you can see that it's gonna make it one-tenth of the size that it was originally. All right. Now I already almost have like a little face here, so I might wanna grab some orbs and put those in there. So I'm going to grab some half spheres here. I'm going to put a half sphere. And you're going to notice that the half sphere does not have any options as to uh, me being able to change its height or its width or anything like that. So we're going to have to use the scale modifier to be able to add or change this. However, we're going to start off by rotating it. So if we click on rotate and drag a rotate tool over here from the modify section. Rotation is being able to turn this around. So uh, we're going to turn it around one of these axes. If I wanted to turn it around X, that means I'm spinning around the red axis. If I choose Y, that's like I'm spinning around the Y axis. And if I choose blue, it's like I'm spinning it around this top axis. So just remember which axis you want to turn around, like, like it's spinning around uh, like a screwdriver or something like that, it's spinning. So let's do the, the X axis. I'm going to spin this around the X axis by 90 degrees. And it says from pivot there. We'll talk about that. If you leave it blank, it's just gonna spin around the center of the object. So I'll press play. Now we can see that 
it spins around that object. And it's actually inside of this object right now. So I might want to move it. So I've spun it to, so that way it sticks out this way. Um, let, me, let me move it here. So I'm going to put a move command in here. I'm going to move it in the negative y direction here just to make it to where you can see it. Here we go, negative 10 in the y direction. So it rotates and then it moves out. There we go. And we can see that I've also cut out the object down here, cut out the entire part. Now let's say I wanted to move this. Maybe I wanted to scale it and move it up here so that way it makes kind of a face. So what I can do is I can go uh, move and I'm going to move it in the Z direction positively. We'll say 20 in the, the Z direction. And I also want to scale this. So I'm going to grab the scale. We did scale earlier and we played around with it. But uh, I want to scale. I, don't, I want it to stick out just the same amount that it's sticking out right now. Or actually maybe I want it, maybe I want it to be a half as much. But I'm going to keep it the same as the the way that it's sticking out this way. But I want it to scale and be smaller in this direction and in this direction. So that's going to be the blue and the red, which are uh, X and Z. So I'm going to say half as big on the X axis and half as big on the Z axis. Let's see what that looks like. So you can see it shrunk down and now it's moved over here. And it's actually still too big. I, I might scale it down on the Y axis as well, 0.5. Just make it half as big as it originally was. There we go. And you can see that it sticks out a little bit too far here. So I might want to move it out less on the Y direction. We'll say negative 5. There we go. That's pretty good. But now I want it to be over... I have it right, but it's kind of like a cyclops. If I want to move this down and over here, so I want to think... When I move it, I want it to move up. We'll say, um, we'll say we'll move it up 15. And the Y direction will make it move out, but maybe a little bit farther. Maybe we'll make it negative 10 in the Y direction. And we want to move it in the X direction. So I'm going to move it in the negative, we'll say negative 5 in the X direction. This is just moving it around where I want it to be. There we go. So not quite as far on the on the x direction. I'm going to move it a little bit more. Negative 15. There we go. That's getting closer. All right. So what I want to do is I actually want to take. If you want to duplicate blocks, like let's say I wanted a second eyeball here, I could right click on this and duplicate it, and I could make a second object that has all the identical properties, which is great. It, it includes all the purple modifiers that you have. So maybe I want to move this one instead of making it negative 15, I want to make it move in the positive 15 direction. So that way it's exactly on the other side over here, moving in the positive direction of the X axis. I'll press play. And there we go. We can scale. We can move and scale, move and scale. And then we can move and chop out objects. Excellent. All right. So we've got a little bit of something going on here. We can see that this goes out of the back here. If I wanted to change that, I could change the size of this, so let's make the width 10, or the height 10 here. And then when we move it, we can move it in the negative y direction here. I'll put negative 10 in the y direction. And we'll see how that looks. Oh, it's moving out a little bit far. He's got a really long nose now. <laughs> all right, all right. Not too bad. Maybe I want to make, I want to make the, uh, the length here also 10. Make that nose a little bit less long. There we go. All right. So we're able to move objects. We're able to move them, scale them, rotate them. Let's talk a little bit about how we can rotate around pivot points. So right now, when you rotate an object, it rotates it around its center point, wherever that happens to be. If we wanted to rotate an object around a different point, we can clarify where that would be. So let's just say... I have, uh, I have a heart here. I'm going to put the heart in here. And I'm just going to press play to see where that heart is. All right. By the way, uh, there's a speed up here, so you can improve the speed. You can bring up or down the speed of your code. And you're going to notice that when you press play up here, it actually starts, it shows a highlight around the code and what point in the code it's currently at. So you can see this little highlight going on here as it goes up and down the code or around the code. So we can see that the heart is right here, but the heart is uh, 
facing this way. So if I want to rotate it, I would want to rotate it around, spin it around the red, uh, the red axis here. But I'm actually just going to move it for now so we can see it a little bit better. So I'm going to click on move, move this object around the negative y direction. I'll say negative 25. And if you want to speed up the process, you can click on the speed and drag it to the right. And then when you press play, it'll happen really fast. So you can see where it currently is. There we go. So I've got this heart. Let's talk about how, let me actually move it out a little bit further so you can see how this works. So the rotate tool has a few different ways that you can work with it. And one of them is you can, uh, you can rotate the object around its center. So that's if you don't specify a pivot point. If I just say rotate around the X, uh, X that's going to flip it around, it's going to spin it around the red axis, so it's like spinning it this way. If I rotated it around the Y axis, it's going to spin it around this way. So let's take a look at what that looks like. You can see that it spun it this way around the axis. And if I spun it around the Z axis, it spins it around here, so it would actually rotate the heart this way. And you can also put a negative 90 degrees. You can actually specify, if you click on the degrees, you can specify by clicking and ro actually rolling this around. You can spin it around 180 degrees or 90 or however you want it to go. But let's say I wanted to spin this around a certain point here. Instead of making it just spin around the object itself, I wanted it to spin around this, uh, this axis right here. Well, you can specify where it says from pivot right here. If you go down to where it says X, Y, and Z right here, this is how we can grab this and we can have it spin around the zero point of the origin right here. So now when I'm spinning it around, it's not spinning from the center of the object, it's spinning from right here. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Ah, now it's over here on the other side of this. Let's take a look at how this can be used. There's a lot of great ways that you can use this, this idea of rotating around the center here. So if I press play, I'll look at that. I'm rotating it 90 degrees around this. If I put negative 90 degrees, you can see that it'll be on this side instead. If I wanted to rotate it around the x-axis instead, we'll see that now it's on top. It's spinning around this red spot right here, the red axis. If I put 90 degrees here instead, then we can see that it's going to go on the bottom down here. So we've got ways that we can play around with this. Let's say I wanted to scale it out a little bit to make it stick out more than what there is there. I can go to uh, scale and scale this object. I'm going to make it scale out of the, after it's done spinning here, I'll make it scale around the y-axis. I'll just say I want it to be 1.5, which is one and a half times the size that it currently is. Let's check it out. There we go. Now it's sticking out a little bit here around the outside. Excellent. So I hope that you have fun with this. There's a lot of fun things that you can do with code blocks. These are just the basic building blocks. What did we learn about? We learned how to add shapes, how to color them, how to cut holes out. We learned how to rotate, move, and scale objects. And we also learned a little bit about how to rotate not just the object itself, but around this central point right here. So there's a lot of fun to be had with code blocks. I hope you have fun creating something that you enjoy. Until next time, think for yourself and be that person you wish you could be.